Welcome back to The Daily Show, where we dissect the headlines so you don't have to. Tonight, we have a fascinating story that will make you question everything you thought you knew about technology and politics. So grab your popcorn and settle in, because this is going to be a wild ride. Now folks, you know how much I love a good paradox, and today's story is a real head-scratcher. Imagine this. A country you wouldn't typically associate with high-tech advancements is outpacing a nation renowned for its technological prowess. Intrigued? You should be. Get this. A new study says that members of parliament in Burundi are more digitally savvy than their counterparts in Kenya. Yes, you heard that right. Burundi, a nation often overshadowed by its economic struggles, is apparently leading the way in digital literacy among its lawmakers. Meanwhile, Kenya, often hailed as the Silicon Savannah, seems to be lagging behind in this particular area. Yeah, you heard that right. It's like finding out that your grandma is better at using social media than you are. It's unexpected, it's surprising, and it's definitely worth talking about. Burundi, a country often associated with economic challenges, is apparently schooling Kenya, a regional tech hub in the digital arena. This revelation comes from a comprehensive study that looked at various aspects of digital literacy, including the use of social media, online research, and digital communication tools among parliamentarians. The findings are not only surprising, but also raise important questions about the factors contributing to this digital divide. Stay with me, folks, because this one's got layers like an onion. We're going to peel back each layer to understand how and why this digital paradox exists. Is it about access to technology? Is it about the quality of digital education? Or is it something deeper, perhaps related to the political and social dynamics of these two countries? We'll explore all these angles and more. Let's start with the basics. In Burundi, there has been a concerted effort to improve digital literacy among lawmakers. This includes regular training sessions, workshops, and the integration of digital tools into their daily work. These initiatives have been supported by both local and international organizations, aiming to bridge the digital gap and empower parliamentarians with the skills they need to navigate the digital world effectively. On the other hand, Kenya, despite its reputation as a tech powerhouse, seems to have overlooked the importance of digital literacy among its lawmakers. While the country boasts numerous tech startups and innovation hubs, the focus has primarily been on the private sector, with less emphasis on equipping public officials with the necessary digital skills. This disparity highlights a critical gap in Kenya's approach to technology and governance. So what does this mean for the future? Well, it suggests that digital literacy is not just about access to technology, but also about the willingness to embrace and integrate it into everyday practices. It also underscores the importance of targeted training and support to ensure that all sectors of society, including lawmakers, are equipped to thrive in the digital age. As we continue to navigate the complexities of the digital world, stories like this remind us that progress can come from the most unexpected places. So stay curious, stay informed, and join us next time for more intriguing insights on The Daily Show. Thanks for watching. So how do we even measure the digital savviness of politicians? It's a question that has become increasingly relevant in our tech-driven world. As technology continues to evolve at a rapid pace, the ability of our leaders to keep up is crucial. But how do we quantify this digital competence? Well, the Interparliamentary Union, IPU, has this fancy thing called the Digital Maturity Index. This index is a comprehensive tool designed to evaluate and compare the digital capabilities of parliaments around the world. It's not just a simple checklist, it's a detailed assessment that covers multiple facets of digital integration. It looks at all sorts of things like a parliament's tech infrastructure, digital skills training, and the overall digital environment within the legislative body. This means examining the hardware and software that politicians use, the training programs available to them, and how well these tools and skills are integrated into their daily operations. Another critical aspect is online engagement with citizens. In today's digital age, the ability of politicians to connect with their constituents through social media, online forums, and virtual town halls is more important than ever. This engagement is not just about being present online, but also about being effective and responsive. Think of it like a report card for how well governments are embracing the digital age. This report card provides a clear picture of where a country stands in terms of digital maturity. It highlights strengths and areas for improvement, offering a roadmap for parliaments to enhance their digital capabilities. 
And according to this report card, Burundi is sitting pretty with a higher score than Kenya. This might come as a surprise to some, but it underscores the importance of looking beyond assumptions and stereotypes. The Digital Maturity Index reveals the true state of digital readiness, showing that even smaller or less economically developed countries can excel in this area if they prioritize digital integration and training. The IPU Index is more than just a ranking, it's a call to action. It encourages parliaments to invest in technology, to train their members, and to engage more effectively with the public. By doing so, they can ensure that they are not only keeping up with the times but also leading the way in digital governance. So, the next time you hear about the digital savviness of politicians, remember that there's a whole system in place to measure and improve it. The IPU's Digital Maturity Index is a vital tool in this ongoing effort, helping to create a more connected, informed, and digitally capable world. Now I know what you're thinking, Burundi, really? But hear me out. Despite facing resource constraints, Burundi has made remarkable strides in leveraging technology within its parliament. They've invested in reliable internet access, equipped their MPs with digital tools, and even embraced e-parliament systems for voting and document sharing. They're basically running a tight digital ship over there. Kenya, on the other hand, presents a bit of a puzzle. While the country boasts a vibrant tech scene with startups popping up like daisies, it seems the parliament hasn't quite gotten the memo. Sure, they have the infrastructure, but the actual adoption of digital tools and practices within the parliament seems to be lagging behind. It's like having a state-of-the-art kitchen but still ordering takeout every night. Section 5, The Global Digital Divide, A Looming Crisis this Kenyan-Burundian conundrum actually highlights a much bigger issue, the global digital divide. Across the world, there's a growing gap between those who have access to technology and those who don't. And this divide isn't just about who has the latest smartphone, it's about access to information, education, and economic opportunities. It's about having a voice in the digital age. Section 6. Bridging the Gap Strategies for Digital Inclusion So how do we bridge this digital chasm? Well, it requires a multi-pronged approach. We need to invest in affordable internet access, especially in underserved communities. We need to prioritize digital literacy programs to equip people with the skills to thrive in a digital world. And we need to ensure that technology is used to empower, not exclude. Section 7. The stakes are high digital maturity and democracy. Look, this isn't just about tech for tech's sake. This is about the future of democracy itself. In the 21st century, a digitally empowered citizenry is crucial for transparency, accountability, and effective governance. When parliaments embrace digital tools, they can connect with their constituents in real time, gather feedback, and make more informed decisions. It's about bringing government into the digital age. Section 8. A call to action, investing in a digitally inclusive future. So let's get this straight. Bridging the digital divide is not a luxury, it's a necessity. It's time for governments, tech companies, and citizens to work together to create a more equitable digital future. We need to invest in digital infrastructure, empower individuals with digital skills, and ensure that technology is a force for good in the world. Section nine, conclusion. Embracing the digital revolution for a more equitable world. We are living in extraordinary times, folks. The digital revolution is not just a buzzword. It is a transformative force that is reshaping every aspect of our lives. From the way we communicate to how we work, learn, and even entertain ourselves, technology is at the heart of this change. But with great power comes great responsibility. It is up to us to ensure that this digital transformation benefits everyone, not just a select few. The digital revolution has the power to transform our world for the better, but only if we make it accessible to all. Imagine a world where every child, regardless of their background, has access to quality education through digital platforms. Picture communities where the elderly can stay connected with their loved ones and access essential services online. Envision a society where people from all walks of life can collaborate and innovate using digital tools. This is the promise of the digital revolution, but it requires a collective effort to make it a reality. Let's learn from Burundi's example and embrace technology as a tool for progress, inclusion, 
and a brighter future for everyone. In Burundi, we see how digital initiatives are bridging gaps and fostering development. Politicians are using tablets to streamline governance, and community events are leveraging digital devices to bring people together. These efforts are not just about technology, they are about creating opportunities and building a more inclusive society. By following Burundi's lead, we can harness the power of the digital revolution to drive positive change on a global scale. And that's our show for tonight. We hope you found our discussion on the digital revolution enlightening and inspiring. Remember, the future is in our hands and it is up to us to shape it. By embracing technology and ensuring its benefits are shared by all, we can create a more equitable and prosperous world. Join us next time for